This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate fly sim hardware solution. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So as you know, we do tutorial videos for the mission editor in DCS World. You guys have asked if we can expand that to also cover IL-2. Now I have absolutely no idea how to do IL-2 missions, so I'm going to hand it over to Tanky to do this, who's agreed to do a series of videos showing at least how he has learned to do the mission editor. So enjoy and thank you Tanky. I'm going to take you through how I actually build a mission for when we are play on a Thursday. Um, so first off, you're going to need to find the mission editor itself here. Uh, now, it actually lives within this area here uh, of your install folder. And yeah, I've just created a shortcut to that just for ease. So let's open that up. And it will just start you off with a, a blank map. And then you'll have your mission properties here. So let's just drag this over. So let's stick a name in here. Cambrai. Go through the dates as you would. pretty much any other okay uh, and we'll set the time for 8 30. now this is very important here the mission type uh, if you want to do something for a multiplayer server it needs to be on deathmatch of course single and uh, cooperative uh, self-explanatory but yeah if you want other people playing in and you want to do a bit of pvp deathmatch is definitely the way to go cooperative we don't really use either um it, we just stick with the deathmatch way of doing things so three presets is where you actually set uh, select your maps in now because i am doing a world war one I, I actually want the arras spring map We'll go into apply here. Now this is obviously what your files will be uh, known as here. But uh, this is how it would actually appear in the mission briefing. So we'll just save that up and let it apply. And we can drag the map round, and what you'll see here is no man's land coming through all the way up there. Now it's not exactly the area of the map that I would like for the Battle of Cambrai, um, which is what I'm uh, looking to represent here. But it has got no man's land in it, which for all intents and purposes will serve for the, uh, the purpose of this. So what you can do, and uh, it took me a while to figure this out with a bit of research, is if you go up there into file and then import file, you'll find that the guys over at um, 1CS have actually included a lot of bits and pieces in here as templates. So you can preload a load of stuff. Now, luckily, the Aris one has everything, so you don't have to load up say airfields and then cities and bridges and, and so on and so on and this will help you populate the entire map and uh, you know that's quite handy so now we're just uh, waiting for that to populate so there you go you can see all those units have uh, appeared up on the map here and yeah it doesn't look very impressive at the moment um, but we can go in we come up here if you use that one you get a, like a little pmp uh, picture in a picture of the the greater map area and you can also then have a more 3d representation and scroll down deeper into it so as you can see in no man's land here uh, it's got this building here in this trench line uh, the, the actual 
No Man's Land itself is pot-marked to high heaven and low hell. And you'll be able to, once you've put some planes and things down uh, and vehicles, you'll be actually able to zoom in onto those models themselves. But that does eat a lot of resources. Um, yeah, you can go down onto the ground and move around and zoom in, zoom out and move it all around here so you can see uh, you know, No Man's Land is full of dead trees. And we can go back to the map. So, what we want to do uh, for the Battle of Cambrai is we're going to set up a Royal Flying Corps airbase. Um, probably around yeah, Mont Salanoi. Does that seem to fairly populated? Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, that's not too bad as World War One airfield to go. Uh, so we'll take that one. So what we want to do is to insert our airfield. Now we we'll come over to this side and we'll go on to airfields. And what you actually want to create is a fake field, and this will allow other people to spawn in uh, instead of just putting down a plane that you could do in single player. So we're gonna select the, uh, the fake field and without wanting to make it too challenging for the guys, we'll put it down here. Now, where we put it, if we didn't alter anything now, all the planes would be facing towards these hangars, which is no good. So if we come out and then come back into it, we'll create a link, linked entry. <coughs> Now, linked entries are uh, required if you want anything to follow any sort of logic for the uh, the game. Uh, let's just rename that, else on the actual map in game it would come up as just airfield. So, let's just use that little red box there to rotate it round. And that's looking pretty good there. So. The planes will spawn in down here about 135 meters, so probably from about there to there, and they'll all be facing in that direction. So now we need to actually put some uh, aircraft down onto the actual airfield. So we'll go into the planes and then add. Now you can limit the number amount of planes that you have there, uh, but for these GR missions, I just set it to unlimited. So you know, if people die, because it's just fun, they can come in and respawn. Then we have to select the model from this massive long list here. Um, so it does help if you know which aircraft you're looking for. Uh, so we want World War One UK aircraft. Which will be there's a Sopworth Camel. Yeah, uh, you'll have your options for obviously in the air. It would spawn in the air. On the runway, it's all up and running. You can just jump in, throttle up, take off. And on parking, you would need to actually start all the engines um, depending on which aircraft you're in. So I always go with on the runway just to make other people's lives easier. Uh, you can also lock it to certain modifications and skin patterns, so you could select them in here and then weapons modifications in here and you'd see like the oldest site there, wing cuts in the top of the Sotworth swing, cockpit light and some bombs. But you can leave that and if you don't lock the modifications um, the people that actually come in and play will be able to select that before they spawn in. Uh, you can set your call times, uh, payloads, whether you want 1,000 rounds, 500 rounds. But yeah, for what we're doing, it doesn't really matter. Uh, engageable, yeah, so we leave all of that and we're not going to touch that either. Now you could do that for every single plane and 
you know, that could take a bit of time. Or you can just copy and paste in and then double click into there and then you can just change the actual plane itself. So there's a sort of dolphin. Span 13. Crystals, even though they're bombers, we can still use them. Where's it gone? There it is. And to be fair, this is the easy part. That. SE5A is another allied one. Now, because not everybody is going to have the uh, Flying Circus mod, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in the Russian trainer um, just so they have got something they can possibly fly. And I don't need that one, so we'll get rid of that. And we'll go OK. And that's the airfield sorted. Um, what we can do though is we can set that to a particular side. Um, let's go with Great Britain and yeah, put the return planes on, and we'll just leave everything else as is. And that is our airfield done. Now it's always a good point to just save as you go along and as you add the different bits and pieces in. So what we have got now is we have got our airfield. And please bear in mind we are in no way experts on in this. This is just what I do and is it's the way I find it the easiest. So We're going to want our tanks to come rolling in from across this line here and be attacking the lines here. Now, the problem is, is uh, none of these units here are enemy. They're all neutral because um, they're green coloured. So what we want to do is we are going to want to make those as enemy targets. Uh, so, no, that's just a bunch of groupings. What we want is all of this stuff here. So let's set that as a working group. Now you can start going in and selecting things. Um, we'll do the pretty much the same as we did with everything else. Uh, we'll make sure that these are all linked entries and that we can then set them as you know destroyable, set them as the enemy, um, so that our, our vehicles actually have something to shoot at. Um, so this will do it across multiple ones of these. So we'll set those as German. That's all good there. And well, it's because it's included that one in there. Yeah, those as linked entries as well. So we've got some vehicles along the front for our tanks that actually engage. And let's set those to German. So okay well that and now you'll see that all of these are a couple which we can quite easily pick up as long as you're eagle-eyed enough 
and we'll set those to GMN as well. Now, if you collapse that, see, it will stop all the uh, linking that goes on as it updates everything. So we're going German there, and yeah, you can see what they do is hide delete after death. So you, if you untick that, obviously it would be a persistent uh, unit there. Um, it's got a damage threshold and everything. But uh, we're not worried about any of that stuff. As long as it vanishes once it's been blown up, that's all we care about. Okay, so just the last couple to do. Get all three of those done at the same time. Okay, so this will now be our little target area. So if we go back and set the entire map up as working, what we can do is once we've got pretty much everything laid out the way we want it, we can delete a lot of this off the map as it would extend out loading times and uh, this, will, this will help cut all of that down uh, without actually losing much detail off the map. Um, so let's go back to that. Uh, let's have a look at the vehicles. Now, ideally, we would want a Mark IV. We're going to Mark V. There we go. So we use Mark Vs instead of Mark IVs. Um, there's not a lot of difference between uh, a Mark IV and a Mark V. Are, to be fair, just armaments, and uh, all we need to do then is start placing these onto the uh, actual battlefield. Uh, now, these will be called the uh, RTC. Uh, fives. Uh, RTC standing for the Royal Tank Corps is uh, what it would have been. No, well, to be fair, beforehand it would have been the Heavy Machine Gun Corps um, because they, the Royal Tank Corps were actually formed up from the Heavy Machine Gun Corps. But uh, Heavy Machine Gun Corps just doesn't sound right. Um, but that's just regimental history at the end of the day. Um, we want that to be British. Uh, by the way, the Battle of Cambrai is the first time in um, battle that tanks were ever used in modern warfare, um, which is why I'm making this, because uh, I was a member of the, uh, the Royal Tank Regiment. Um, and because of that, so the Battle of Cambrai is one of our battle honours. So, what we need to do now is just make sure that our lovely little Mark V down here is facing in the right direction, which will be there. Let's zoom back out a bit. And we're going to want a few of these. And the nice thing is, is you can just copy and paste these with the good old Control C. Control V and let's start pasting these bad boys in here. Mm. 
interestingly enough, these vehicles were actually not that quick and uh, not that great in uh, muddy conditions. Uh, so the tank commanders actually had to walk out in front of them um, and test the ground to see how firm it was with, a, with an ash pole. And that ash pole still continues on within the, the offices of the, the RTR. Now what we have to do is link all of these to one main commanding vehicle. Um, so we would do that with a shift T and we'll make it the guy in the middle. And you can now see that this one is linked to this one. I'm going to have to do that with every single one. Now, of course, there would have been a lot more vehicles than this. But uh, to be fair, I don't have five days to sit down and create a massive reenactment of a battle. So there we go, they're now all linked in as one unit. So let's just have a quick save of that. Now what we want these guys to do obviously is go off and muller the, uh, the front lines. So we're going to have to tell them to do a few things. So we're going to need to be into the MTUs here. And we are going to need to have a mission begin. Like so, and a mission timer. We link these two together. So this means that as soon as the mission begins, it will wait a certain period of time which we'll now set here, I uh, generally go for two seconds. And then what will happen is we can then link the triggers and things off this. So they all want waypoint there. Priority, you have different priorities here. So if you have it on low, they'll get to it when they get to it. Um, it's not really high on their priority. If there's something else to do, they'll go off and do that. Medium, it's a, an equal balance. And then high, they'll do nothing but head for that waypoint. Um, we'll leave it as medium because in case they came across anything, you could then just have them automatically engage that if you wanted. Uh, the waypoint area, I like to set that as about 200 meters, um, purely because that means that there's enough spread to avoid collisions if you have formations going on, uh, because it's the exact same waypoint system, whether it be a ground vehicle or a plane. Um, they're never going to hit 100 kilometers an hour um, as these vehicles, they're the, the, you can run faster than these things um, so I'll just leave it at 100 and they'll just try and cross the ground at their time, uh, their max speed um, so we're going to want to object link these 
and this is why I changed the name of it. So if we then select the first one, hold down shift and double click the last one, it's all it's got them all selected onto there. And so these will all try to hit waypoint one. Um, I just do all the vehicles um, because I've had it in the past where it hasn't quite worked properly where I've only tagged the main lead vehicle. Um, and because of that, I just go with the uh, tag all the vehicles that are going to be going through that waypoint and they'll all follow it anyway. So we can actually let's just target link that. So at the beginning of the mission, uh, you know, as people are spawning in and jumping into their aircraft, because these things are so slow, they will actually start trundling off onto their, uh, their waypoints. Um, and what we can also do is we can have another timer coming off that, and we'll link the two of those together. So basically the way this will work is the mission begins, then it will trigger this timer. After two seconds, it will fire that, but then it would also trigger this. So we then go in there, have that for four seconds later. And that'll be four seconds after this first one is triggered. And we'll actually get a change of formation going for these vehicles. So targeting that one to that one. Once again, Shift T. We'll object link all of these. This is where it starts getting a little bit messy. Uh, so these will now, after four seconds, start to go in this particular formation but they're all, they know it's off-road, so they won't be able to travel as quick as they can. Uh, but we don't want them bashing into each other, so we'll keep it nice and loose. And then we'll, then we'll just hold that formation until they get to the, uh, the end of the line where they want to go. So we'll go back to adding in the waypoints. Now you could copy and paste these if you wanted, and uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. They'd all have the same name though. Um, so we've got that one linked up there, 200 meters, medium priority, and they're trying to go as fast as they can. There's those now. That's not too great a distance to be thinking about starting to engage the actual enemy targets that we want them to engage. So what we will do is we'll put in an attack area. So once they hit that, they will then start heading over. We'll plop it there. Link. That up to that. Make sure all these tanks know it's for them. And then we'll actually go into it. And this is where you can actually specify what you want them to attack. So we want it to be on a high priority because let's face it, they don't need to be going anywhere else. We just need to make sure that they take everything out. And we want them to attack the ground targets, which is why we've turned these into enemy units. So they actually attack these things instead of just firing at the ground. Um, and we can set how big an area, because it will be in a radius from there that we want them to attack. So uh, let's, let's give it 3,000 meters. See if that's big enough. Yeah, that looks just about right. Uh, it's designated here by that yellow line there. It's not too great to see. You can see a bit better now. Um, 
a fact. Let's just there we go. A couple of bunkers and things on the outside of it, but uh, it's got the majority of it in there. And that would be the round units set up for this mission. Um, so not a lot else to do. You, know, you could put in some enemy vehicles. Um, yeah, if you were doing like a World War II scenario, you could have some Panthers and, and things coming in. Um, you can also set up artillery units uh, and the likes, um, but no doubt uh, I'll be asked to cover that sort of thing in a later date. Um, now this is going to be pretty boring for the guys that are flying it at the moment. So they'll just see a load of tanks roll off and start battering things. So what we want to do is we want to give them something to shoot at. So we're going to planes and we have everything available to us. Um, I think I've pretty much got all the vehicles anyway. And uh, what should we have them go up against? Uh, let's have want triplanes. DR7s, albatrosses, let's have a mix of albatrosses, DR1s and DR7s, and this is where things get fun, um, so Albatross, E5, let's create that as a linked entry, Germany, now this is critical here that you make sure that this is in air, um, we also could set, you know, whether it's got full ammo load or a half ammo load, um, what sort of loadouts we want it to have and the likes. You could also set the AI behavior here. Uh, we've got some pretty good pilots that fly with us on a Thursday, so I'm going to set them from like ace to high, because uh, at least that will give them a bit of a challenge. Now, as it stands, this here is the altitude that the planes will be flying at, and it's all done in meters. So it's 48.7 meters off the ground. That's not very high, so that would stand a good chance of running into the deck. Um, let's set it uh, at about 500 meters. And we also want to make sure we know which direction it's flying in. So at the moment, it's flying just north where we want them to be flying in this direction just to make our lives a little bit easier. Like so. And what I'm going to do as well is a little bit of trickery. So I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to paste it there and there. But this will be our DR1s. This one will be our DR7s. So that's fine there. Actually, scratch that. Uh, no, it will work. Just having a bit of a brain fart moment here. So, yeah, if you've already put down a marker but you want to change the model, um, you've got the little model option there. Uh, so, this one is the DR1. Uh, 
and this one is going to be our DR7s. Uh, we'll just go with a standard DR7, not DR7F. And now when we zoom in and have a look, there is your DR1. And there's your DR7. And they're all flying in that sort of direction. So let's actually now turn these into a flight by copying and pasting. And these guys are quite well spread out. Link them all up. Let's turn these guys into a flight. And do the same with these. Okay. And you can see that these will all be at 500 feet um, and they'll be flying in the rough direction that we want them to be flying in. Um, so, at the moment, um, they are all set to enabled. Now, if you have them on enabled, that means that they will appear straight away. We don't want that um, because that could cause a bit of a problem. So, we knock off enabled. And now, if the mission was to be played through, they wouldn't appear at all. But then, that's not very good either. We're going to need to make them appear somehow. So the way we do that is with a trigger. And all your triggers are here under the MCUs. And what I like to use is a complex trigger. Now our planes are going to be flying over this way. So they take off from here, come up to here, and then fly in that way and we'll put in the waypoint markers for that in a moment but with this complex trigger what we need to do is we need to have it on object enters or object enters alive um, we also need it to check for the planes and we'll have that about a 2000 meter radius so now we've got to come in here select the aircraft so we've got bristols and these are of course the aircraft on our side that we want um, yeah, if you're doing a PVP, you wouldn't need to be putting in this sort of trigger unless you're doing it for ground vehicles, which would work exactly the same. Sort of camels, spads, SE5s, U2Ss. We'll just move those over for now. Now, the 80 generally denotes that it's a player vehicle um, or just a dashed line all these ones here are AI units but I just to cover all bases throw all of these in as well and there's a lot more of these than there are the player units but it's always better to be safe than sorry
just gonna scroll down through here. and then transfer them across. So now that when any one of our air, air, aircraft hits this, it will, if they're alive, set off a uh, set off our trigger. Like so. But what's it actually going to set off? Well, we also need to just target link that to that. So that's our initial timer for the mission begin. But like I said, what's it actually going to trigger? Well, we're going to need to trigger a spawner. Um, now, spawners, you could do with an activate command, but we had a bit of problem using the activate command. I found the spawner one is the one that works a little bit better um, because with the activate command, it would just literally shop everything time and time and time and time and time again. Um, with the spawner, we can actually control that a little bit better. Um, and so we can actually just spawn whatever aircraft are linked to that. And then we can have a counter going and then tell it to deactivate. But what we need to do is link the spawner to our actual complex trigger and we do that via the selected object menu like so um, so that'll come in there ah no do it to a timer first actually won't be able to put in the deactivator um, so what we need to do is just delete these two off and then they'll vanish off there. Uh, put in our timer just here. Two seconds and then to our object entered. And enter the lives. Because we can do this to here and then link this to all of these. Like so. And so these will spawn every time something enters there. And yeah, it will just keep on going and going and going and going. But because we put this timer first, this will actually go to a counter. Like so. And within that counter, we will then control how many times this will get fired. Um, so let's go with six times. So this would fire six lots of what we've got here. And then after six times, this will then trigger the deactivate command, which will then turn off the trigger for the, the spawner. Um, so these would fire six times and then no more would go on. And it's just a, an easy way of keeping the amount of units on the, uh, the battlefield under control. If you didn't have a spawner, you would have to put in every single aircraft that you want and then they would all just come in in a water. Um, you, this way you can do things like putting delays and things onto it.
it's uh, there's that and that. Now we actually need to get the, the place to actually do something. Um, so we need to get them to fly. And we could set up individual waypoints for them, but um, yeah, yeah. Well, let's have them flying different fly patterns. Um, so this lot. We're we'll going in at uh, 500 feet, 200, and bring my these are biplanes. Be lucky if you get 150 uh, of them. I'll see. Copy and paste. So they're going there. Um, these guys can come in this way, and then these guys here can come in this way. So that will be linked to that one, that one will be linked to that one, and then that one to that one. This one will be linked to that one and then linked to that one. Now we want these to be fired four seconds after the spawner, um, else it won't actually pick it up. So we've put in another timer and target link that to the previous one. And then what we can do is target link that to all of those triggers and then that will fire all of those. Now this one here, this trigger, I want to be object linked to the DR7s. So that one, that one, that one and that one. You can do the selective selection like this by holding down control and then just double clicking the last one. Like so. And that's all of those linked up there. Now um, what we're going to do is another um, attack area command uh, for the enemy planes um, but we're going to do that right at the end because what we can do is actually have all three of the end waypoints here linked into that one so we want the dr1s You see, and if you make a mistake on it, it's easy enough to just go in and re rectify that. And that's the R1's done, and now just the albatrosses. Now, of course, you can do other things. You can make things as complex or as simple as you like. So that's that in there. Yeah, we could do also do a formation change uh, if we wanted. Um, but to be fair, I'm quite happy with this gaggle. Um, 
So I now want attack area here. And attack area. High priority air targets. And we'll have them attack ground targets as well, because um, what will happen is that if there are no aircraft available, they will then go on to try and attack the tanks. Um, and we'll go out of 3,000 meters and we'll do it for 120 seconds, 120 seconds, 120 minutes even. Um, point how long did I put this one on for 10 minutes oh no we want 120 that's how long our missions generally last um, so from there we want to target link all these end waypoints down into this like so and then object link all of the planes in like that. So what should happen is that once these planes have spawned in, they'll fly these routes and then come in and patrol this area for any targets that they uh, want to engage. Let's just quickly save that. And to be fair, this is nearly done for how I set up the missions. Um, we now need to just put in the waypoints. So this would be our translator icon, and this will be our takeoff point. We don't want that white, we want it black. This just means that everybody can see it, and you know, whoever's in there, it doesn't matter for AI. And the icon ID we want is a takeoff point, and so that's that one in there. This one will be waypoint one. You don't need to worry about putting attitudes and things in um, so much on these uh, because these are just the icons for you as a player that you'd see on the map. Uh, so we want that as a waypoint. Target link. Everything up. Okay. And we will copy that one and paste it in there. Target link that one to that one. This one will be waypoint two. Um, now we could, if we wanted to actually change it from just being a waypoint to an action point, because um, you've got those options there. You, know, you could have cover for any, uh, let, let's do that. Let's uh, cover for any armored column. Um, And let's call this the attack uh, point. Um, so that is basically how I construct a mission. Um, doesn't take that long. Um, but what I just want to do is sanitize the uh, the map slightly. I would normally have done this right at the beginning um, let me just make sure i've got everything saved yeah this one is one of the quirks of 
IL2's mission editor is if it's set in a certain group, um, you might not necessarily just be able to select the bits and pieces off straight away. And you might have to go down into different groups and then delete them out from there. Okay. You just need to be careful when you do this though, because you might end up deleting something that you don't want to delete. Um, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. I can't change the programming on that. So as you can see, well, I've got our nice little battlefield area there, um, which should be quite nicely populated. Uh, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, let's make the airfields the next working group. Ah, there's not that many of them, they will leave those as they are. No, that won't be too much of a problem. That won't be too much of a problem. To be fair, I'm just trying to save a bit of time here. Um, this one could be a little bit of a problem. Um, so let's basically wipe out the top end of the map. Cross here. And then, oh, there is Cambrai after all. Uh, it's too late for me to move it down the south now. But that is where, in that area, the uh, the first ever tanks were used in, in combat. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this as well is because the uh, the day that we're going to be flying the IO2 mission is the actual anniversary date, the battle honor date. Um, so that just made, made just perfect sense to me to, to do that. You don't need everything right at the back and right at the front either. So, other than right in the actual brief, um, which is done in here. Um, this is it done. Uh, the only thing that you can, we could do is using the little green arrow down here is we can check that it'll work. Uh, so yeah, the mission integrity is checked, uh, passed its check. So all the logic works properly uh, as it should do. And everything should fire off as we expect it to. Um, here we go. For the actual description, um, this has to be done in HTML script. Um, so we would have uh, uh, Cambrai, and there we go. There's an example of your, your HTML script where it would put a space in there. And I'll fill this in at a later date. Um, now this is done, what we can do is go off and actually test the mission. So we'll close that down because you can't have two of them running at the same time. Uh, let's just turn off the VR because I'm not going to be using my headset for this. Uh, you give it a quick test. Um, obviously, I need to open up my own um, server to do that, um, and you won't be able to see any of the uh, the password rating to get into there. Um, but 
yeah, it's, you're going to have to do that yourself anyway. There we go. That's us in there. Uh, you can see I was uh, driving around in the Sherman in the last mission. So, multiplayer, dogfight, create your own server. Move that one from there. Add this one into the rotation. Uh, down here, you would set up all the various different settings that you want on there. I don't need to do that because uh, it's already preset. Now we just need to get it moving. So as you can see there, it's Battle of Cambrai, Battle of Cambrai. GI Airfield, British Aircraft. As you can see here as well, there's your takeoff points, your waypoint one was there, and the attack point is shown on the map. Uh, I can't remember what weapons this has. Pretty sure it had 20 mil available to it. Oh, I might have been wrong. Put those on navigation lights. Yeah, that'll do. The only downside is it's got the, uh, the Russian star on it. Oh well, it can have a decent scheme on it. Um, right. So let's see how this goes. I suppose it would help if I had turned on my rudder pedals. So that's not going to be very helpful in the slightest. As Cat would say, don't worry, Tanky, I'll take that out. But at least we're on there. Okay, so I don't really need to be worrying about weak direct or anything I'm going in. So let's just check these units. 
There we go. As you can see, set at uh, 100 kilometers an hour, but barely doing a snail's pace. So they should actually start fighting probably about halfway through the uh, the time that the air battle is going on. Yep, so that's all looking good there. Uh, obviously, that's my plane. Let's see where these enemy planes are. There we go. Here's the enemy planes spawning in. Doing their best to make sure everybody dies. So just uh, throttle back a bit. Go on this lovely sizing tour of the uh, apprentice. Keep an eye out for the Mark Fives. And there they are, slowly plundering the bottom. And here come the enemy fighters. at different times. These are looking good. They're all in their relevant formation as well. There we go, there's uh, some over there. There's some more over there. All coming in to attack the four little Everything is working exactly as I intended it to be. So far, barbed wire doing what barbed wire does to World War One tanks.
see the, uh, the enemy planes that were chasing the uh, poor lonely little biplane that was sent up against them. It's obviously now been killed. But I don't care about what the planes are doing to my little plane. This is all the test just to make sure everything's working. And by the time the uh, Mark 5s get there, they'll start uh, having their lovely little fight. So I'm quite happy with that. And uh, hopefully that gives you some sort of insight on how these missions are created and maybe some pointers as well if you wanted to create some of your own missions. Um, if any of you want any more of these sorts of things being made up, then uh, drop us a comment down in the uh, the comment section of the video and uh, or any requests over to Cat and we'll get them made off for you. All right, thanks very much and I will catch you next time.